Welcome back to the Slack API video tutorial. Now that we have a good idea of what Slack apps are, let's get familiar with the Slack platform features and APIs so you know what those apps can do. The first thing to know about is slash commands. You may have used Slack's built-in commands like slash join to join a channel, slash who to list users in the current channel, or slash remind to set a reminder. There are over 20 more. Just type slash on Slack to see them all. You can create your own slash commands using Slack's API. For example, you could create a weather lookup tool where the user would type slash weather Honolulu and press enter. That should prompt for today's forecast for Honolulu, maybe something like 78 degrees and sunny. If you want to build more robust apps, you're going to need to use Slack's web APIs. Our web APIs use HTTP RPC methods, which are similar to REST methods, but serve slightly different purposes. For example, you can make an API call like chat.postmessage to send a message via HTTP post. Or you could call the user.info method to get a user's information like their full name. If you want your app to access information about a user, say a user's email address, you'll need to enable appropriate app scopes. OAuth scopes let you specify exactly how your app needs to access certain information. Slack also offers interactive messages, which allow you to use some UI components like buttons and drop-down menus to create a better user experience inside your app. For example, if you're building a flight booking app, it's a good idea to give users tasks using buttons that say things like book a flight, view your trip, or more options. You can also create dialogues, interactive modals that can capture multiple pieces of information and send them directly to your app. You can use them to build a robust form inside Slack or simply collect a single line of text. You can also use message actions, simple shortcuts that enable people to take action on Slack conversations, turning messages into tasks, tickets, follow-ups, or leads inside your app. You may already have seen the third-party apps from Jira and Asana, where you can report a bug or create a new task from a Slack message. In order to use these platform features, you'll need to use the Events API. Let's say you want to build a friendly bot that greets new hires in your organization. In other words, whenever a new user joins a Slack workspace, the bot sends the user a welcome message followed by further actions. To build a bot like this, you need to subscribe to events coming from the Slack API server. In this particular scenario, you need to listen to the team join event. So whenever a new user joins a workspace and the event gets triggered, Slack will send a JSON payload to your server so you can use that data, like the event type, and information about who the event was triggered by, when, and so on, to take action and respond to users. There are lots of events you can subscribe to, like app mention. This is a message event when some user mentions a bot name, like at recipe bot. Another example might be star added, when a user adds a star to a message. Another way to receive events from Slack is the RTM API, short for Real-Time Messaging API. This is a WebSocket-based real-time connection between Slack and your server. Unlike the Events API, this is not an HTTP connection where you can call on demand. It requires an always-on Socket connection throughout the session. We recommend sticking with the Events API, which supports all our newest features and is easier to scale. But if you can't set up a public endpoint where we can dispatch events, RTM may be a good option. We'll see you next time.